Hey guys, it's Castro72 and I'm here with another pickups video. This time it's for the month of September 2011. I know I'm running a little late. Uh, it's already November, but I want to get this out of the way so that I could do the October uh, pickups video um, sometime soon. So um, I just want to answer a question uh, that a lot of people who are new to my channel have been asking me. They're wondering where I get the rarity and the value of all the games that I mentioned in these pickups. And um, I wanted to let them know that I get them from the Digital Press Collector's Guides. Uh, this is the advanced guide for all those um, systems that have been retired 16-bit uh, and up. And this is the Digital Press by, uh, Collector's Guide 7th um, edition for uh, all the 8-bit systems that have been retired. Anyway, I hope that uh, answers some of your questions. I can give you... Uh, the link to the Digital Press um, uh, website where you could probably order them. I don't know exactly if they're still available. I know they're updating uh, one of these catalogs, so um, they may not be available, but the update might be coming soon. Uh, other than that, uh, I guess we could just begin. Uh, what did I get on, in September? Oh, okay, I went to the Brown Elephant. Another, It's a resale store that I go to a lot. And I found two N64 games. I got a WWF Warzone, which is a rarity one valued at $2, and I got it for $1. And I also found Star Wars Rogue Squadron, which is a rarity one valued at $10, and I got this for a dollar, neither of which I've, I've never played before, or, and I don't have in my collection, so I was happy to find those for a buck each, you know, that's cheap. Uh, next, I went to the unique thrift store where I where I always go, and I got a Sega Master System uh, game called Fantasy Star. Now everybody knows Fantasy Star. Now this is a, actually a Rarity Five, valued at thirty five dollars. I was really surprised, and um, I got it for a dollar ninety nine. Now I I actually have a copy of Fantasy Star. My friend Lewis, a childhood friend of mine, uh, gave me his original copy years and years ago and uh, I never had uh, the heart to actually erase his uh, memory save so that I could actually play the game because you know it was from like 20 years ago I never I never wanted to erase it uh, so I never actually played through the game but now that I found this copy I think I'll play I'll, I'll, I don't know who owned it before so uh, I'll probably I'll probably play through this game uh, erasing the old memory save that's on that I hope it's still active that like the battery still works because I heard lithium batteries really don't last more than like eight years or something like that um, but I'm gonna give it a go I haven't even tried it yet uh, the next game I, I found there was the Fantasy Star 2 game the sequel for the Sega Genesis it's a rarity 2 valued at $20 I also got this for $1.99 now I think it's not complete I mean it has the uh, instruction booklet, and Fantasy Star also had the instruction booklet with it. Both of those games had instruction booklets, but I think this was supposed to come with a map. I'm not too sure. Uh, I had to check the guide again, but um, the map is missing, so you know I'm missing the map. But at least I do have the instructions. Uh, next, I found Might and Magic Gates to Another World. It's a rarity for... Valued at twelve dollars, I got it for dollar ninety nine. Sega Genesis game. Uh, everybody knows Might, Might and Magic from the PC. Then I found The Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time, and the Master Quest. Now this is the disc for the GameCube. It was a promotional disc. Uh, and the funny thing is that you probably can't see it, but I, th there's a faded sticker here from uh, like. Uh, Electronics Boutique, which is now GameStop, and it says $34.99. And I can't believe this game was $34.99 when it was actually free. I remember they were giving this free at Best Buy. Um, anyway, I, I actually have a pristine copy of this game. Um, but I wanted to get this one because I was just like, well, you know, it's a Zelda game. Maybe I could use it for a trade. And I got it for $2.99. Another nice GameCube game. Then I found some long box PlayStation 1 games. I found Warhawk. Uh, Rarity 3, valued at $7. I got it for $1.99. Uh, it's complete. And then I found Primal Range. Uh, Primal Rage for the PS1. 
uh, Rarity 5 valued at $20. I was surprised. It's kind of rare and kind of expensive. It's kind of a shitty game, too. And I got it for $1.99. And you know, I always love finding the long box versions of games for the PS1. And this one is kind of a disappointment. It's Skeleton Warriors, long box for the PS1. Rarity 3, valued at $5. But, uh, you know what, I bought it for $1.99, when I got to my car, I opened it up, I was like, there's a copy of Tomb Raider 1 in here, and I was like, what? Ugh, so, this is, let this be a lesson to you guys, when, when you're out searching for games, make sure you really inspect what you're getting. I mean, like, when I saw this, I opened it up, and I said, oh, sure, the disc is in there, you know, I, I didn't even bother, I, I, I actually took it out and I looked to make sure it wasn't scratched, I put it back, I didn't even realize it was the Tomb Raider game, you know, uh, I was just excited that it was Skeleton Warriors. So, um, Tomb Raider is worth, uh, what is Tomb Raider worth? Tomb Raider is rarity one valued at four bucks. I have like three copies of Tomb Raider 1. It's so common. Anyway, if anyone's played Skeleton Warriors, let me know what it's like, you know, leave a comment. I'm kind of interested. It looks kind of cool, like a, looks kind of like a Donkey Kong Country game, but anyway, if one of you guys have played it, let me know what it's about. Maybe someday I'll find the actual disc. Uh, last but not least, I found some games at GameStop. And they're both GameCube games. I'm trying to collect GameCube now that it's totally dead and, and GameStop is trying to get rid of them. I found this rare one called Spirits and Spells. Um, I hear this is probably going to be one of those that are somewhat rare on the GameCube. Um, it's made by a company called Dreamcatcher. I got it for $5.99. Um, of course, not the rarest of the games. I think one of the rarest games on the GameCube is some NCAA basketball game which I haven't found, believe it or not, but um, this one's $5.99, Spirits and Spells, it's complete. And last but not least, I found Beautiful Joe Red Hot Rumble for $4.99, uh, complete. And I think this is kind of like a Smash Brothers game. I haven't played it, uh, but I think it's like a Smash Brothers game with the Beautiful Joe guys in it. I'm hoping it's good. And that's pretty much all I got for the month of September, guys. It's not, not many games this time around. Uh, but I wanted to kind of let you guys, uh, I don't know, in on something I, I really like about collecting. I just kind of had an epiphany when I was collecting recently. You know, it's, sometimes it's the hunt that's a lot more fun than, than the games. You know, like, um, I mean, I love finding new games and I love playing them. But sometimes just... Going out and hunting for the games is something I really like, and I'm sure you guys have the same feeling. It's like people you meet and just weird type of situations you get into. It's like the people at the unique thrift store already know me as like the game guy. So like as soon as I walk in, they kind of like grab the games off the shelves and like, hey, this is what we got. You know, and that's kind of a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling you get just by collecting. And I'm sure you guys have that same feeling too when you guys go up, when you guys go out and start looking for these games. Anyway, uh, those are what I picked up for September 2011. Uh, happy gaming, guys, and I will see you for um, my October thrift pickups. Thanks a lot.